Hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, today I'm starting something new, and it's a gear showcase. So that means I'll be showcasing, uh, like, uh, I don't know, like a piece of gear or maybe, you know, a, a group of gear or something that is related to each other. And I'll be showcasing them and telling about their history and all about them. So it will be real cool. And today, as you can see, I will be showcasing the PASGAT system. So uh, I'm going to put this down here so you can have a little bit more steadiness. And then, yeah. Okay, so, this is the PASGET system. Uh, we'll start off with the vest. So, the vest, this is the vest. Um, it was designed in 1977, I think. Uh, I believe it was 77. If not, it was sometime in the mid 70s that this was designed the whole PASGAT system was designed in the mid 70s but this was designed to replace the m1969 fragmentation vest which we see in vietnam with the army uh there weren't there were some differences some more major than others uh for one the material changed the PASGAT system was like a pioneer with uh, military use of Kevlar. So this is made of Kevlar, whereas the uh, M1969 vest was made of ballistic nylon. Uh, and the color was something else that was changed. Um, there's the base color for the Pazgat, as, as you can see, uh, woodland camouflage, M81 woodland camouflage. The uh, M1969 vest only came in one color, and it was uh, all drab. Now, there are covers you can get to these, but we'll get to that later. The closure changed. On the M1969, it's a zipper, a zipper, and I believe some Velcro. Yeah, that's what it is. The zipper and some Velcro, a Velcro flap. This is just Velcro all the way around. I do know that the M69, because of the, having a zipper and it's an old vest, it does te tend to get stuck after a while, and that's not something you want to deal with in the field. Another thing is these shoulder pads. They added these shoulder pads as more protection to you know your shoulders, and there was extra padding in the front of the shoulders here to uh, act as kind of like a, a padding for when you're firing your weapon and yeah so there's all over all around more shoulder protection um another thing that they changed along with the closure and all that other stuff is the seams, kind of like, well not really the seams, but where they join, where the, the different parts join together. On the M1969, it's a series of eyelets and laces that you have to tie together to loosen or make bigger however you want. With this, the Pazgat, there's a, a elastic bands, and on the inside, there's strips of nylon. So yeah, this was first introduced, it was first introduced in the early 80s, but it was first seen in 1983 in, uh, in Grenada, so it was used by, I, I've seen pictures of being used by the 82nd Airborne, I'm not too sure if the Rangers used it or not, I know most of the pictures you see them just wearing OG-107 jungle fatigues, so, but as far as I know, it was used by the 82nd Airborne. Uh, it was, 
It was replaced by the IBA interceptor body armor, which is a uh, a ballistic vest. Like, I mean, I guess this could be a ballistic vest too, but this the interceptor body armor system will stop a bullet because it's a plate carrier. This is not. This is made to stop shrapnel and other low uh, velocity uh, pieces of metal or you know anything that will be flying around in a battle. Um, but yeah, it was replaced by the interceptor in the late nineties, the late late nineties. But it was it's still being used in small numbers by the U.S. Navy nowadays. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure it is being used by law enforcement as well. So this vest right here, um, back to the materials, this has 13 layers of uh, aramid fabric, which is Kevlar. And like I said earlier, it could stop shrapnel and small arms fire under cir some circumstances. Like basically... If it's being fired at an angle or how far away it is, then it could stop a uh, uh, like a handgun round, like a nine mm or forty five. Um, there was an over vest because it wouldn't stop like rifle rounds, like seven six two five five six, all that type of stuff. They made a small arms protective over vest which it was basically a plate carrier that would go over this. But nobody really liked it because it was really heavy with the combination. And the over vest could stop 762, up to 762. So that's really a big difference from this. Um, it's a very interesting uh, piece of equipment. Uh, you pretty much, you could use it for most impressions from Grenada up until I mean, they even did they, they used it in the Iraq war I've seen pictures of tank crews using this in the Iraq war so you could you could get away with it from for Iraq war but you have to do your research on that now both of these items came with their own manuals this is the manual for the Pazget vest. Um, there was a field manual that showed uh, different information about this, but this was the official uh, manual specifically for the Pazget vest. It's There's lots of different information in here. There's sizing information, how to wear it properly, the different protection, all sorts of good stuff. So if you want me to uh, show this closer, um, just ask for it down in the comments, and I'll, I'll do that sometime. So yeah, that's that, the Pazget vest. And Pazget... Um, I say PASGET, but that's basically a combination of the acronym. The acronym means uh, personal, yeah, personal armor system for ground troops. So it was, you know, a new, yeah, armor system. Oh, and if you're wondering what this, what this is all about, these buttons, that was to open this up. There's one, there's some on the back too, but you more or less put your suspender straps through here and then close it up again for when you wear your LBE. Next, we have the Pazgat helmet. The Pazgat helmet was pretty revolutionary, to tell you the truth. Um, they replaced the M1 steel helmet. Uh... And, uh, wait a minute, before we get to this, I, I said I was going to mention about covers for that. They did have covers for those, uh, vests. Okay, let me bring it back in. They had covers for these vests, 
Um, they came in uh, six color desert camouflage, which we see in Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm. And they came in a three color desert, which we see in the 90s and a little bit into the Iraq War. And I'm pretty sure that was it. I'm pretty sure those were the only two covers you could get for this. But I may be wrong. So, back to what I was saying about this. This is pretty revolutionary, this helmet was. Um, like I said, it replaced the M1 steel helmet. Uh, it basically, it resembled the uh, German Stahlhelm that we see during World War II. And that the, they that led to that being called the uh the K pot or wait I think no they called it the K pot because it was Kevlar but they did they called it Fritz because that's what they called Germans back in World War Two so the main the only the main changes were the shape because this this shape offered more protection to the back of the head the back and sides of the head and the different material because the m1 helmet was an all steel helmet with a fiberglass or compressed paper liner so this was all like the vest this was first seen in grenada in 1983 uh with again with the 82nd airborne they got a lot of the new stuff because they were part of the rdf for rapid deployment force so Rapid deployment force is exactly what it says. It's a rapid deployment force. When they get the call of something that's not supposed to be, they can gear up, load up, and drop into a drop zone within a certain amount of time, which is usually a very short amount of time. So they got all of the new stuff, like much like Airborne in World War II. So yeah, they got the new stuff. Uh, this was replaced in 2004, I believe, by the ACH, which is the Advanced Combat Helmet. The design is a lot, is very similar to this, except it doesn't have this brim on the front. The brim is pretty much taken off, and it's like flat on the front. Um, however, it is, this is still used by law enforcement nowadays. Um, it was made of... Here's the inside if you want to see that. This particular helmet is actually an un unissued helmet dated 1989. I got it with the manual. I'll we'll look at this then. But this particular helmet consisted of 19 layers of Kevlar. It could stop shrapnel and rifle rounds up to 308. So if you know, if you've seen a 308 round, you before you can tell you know that round is it's a pretty large round as far as rifles go and and stuff so this can stop up to 308 <clears throat> and uh the, there were certain parts for it for the parachutists it was that's what it says in the manual parachutists but it's parachute paratroopers sorry um, there were different parts that you could get for this that I think you should have had when you jumped in. Oh, and it was basically a foam pad that went in the back. Here, now let, okay, all right. I got, there's a foam pad that goes in the back and a retention strap, which pretty much came from the back of the pad and went around front and attached to this so I'll, I'll show you in the manual it, it, there's a pretty good picture of it in the manual so and there were there were covers for this uh, and another thing with the vest I don't have any covers for that so I can't really show you anything about that but I do have a, a cover on a helmet this this is my main Gulf War helmet. So this has the six color desert cover on it. And yeah. Other things you could get for it were 
this helmet band. It was a helmet cover retention band, I think is what they called it, because it was made to keep the cover in place. And then you see some pictures of guys with their goggles on it. So yeah, there. as far as covers go, there was a woodland camouflage cover, a six color desert camouflage cover, a three color desert camouflage cover, and there were there were uh, two Marpat covers that you could get for it because the Marine Corps they uh they used a helmet they used this helmet up until the uh, late two thousands but it was it was replaced in the mid two thousands but it was re it was like you know completely replaced in the late two thousands so they they were using their Marpat covers with these helmets. So, yeah, that's that, and here's the booklet. There's really, there's interesting stuff in all these. Again, here's a sizing chart. It tells you pretty much everything about the helmet. And here is with the parachutist stuff. This is the back of the helmet. And this is that foam pad that goes on, and then this is a retention strap. And then that's what it looks like when it's on. See, it comes around the back and hooks up to the chin straps. Eventually, I'm going to get one of them, like the foam pad and the retention strap, because I think it's really nifty. So, yeah. So, that's that. This is our first gear showcase. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I'm gonna do some more of these. These are, this is interesting. Okay, let me right, focus. <laughs> so yeah, I'm gonna do some more of these. Uh, you know, get some information out there, and plus it gives me more ideas since I have, you know, an extensive selection of stuff. So yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.